Okay, uh, yeah, if everybody can see everything, I guess I'll go ahead and start. Uh, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. In, in four, from 4,000 BC to the year 1940, people were making visual figurative art. And for those of you who don't know, uh, figurative art is just art that includes figures, whether that be people or animals or just things that you can recognize. You look at this piece of art and you look, think, this is a thing, I know what it is. <laughs> and obviously this is a very large amount of time to cover and there were many movements within that time. Uh, you had uh, Renaissance artists who were making paintings of beautiful buildings and the learning that was going on at the time and cities. You had medieval artists who were making portraits of the Christ and Mary and telling allegories through their paintings. Uh, there were the prehistoric paintings, which were people just painting what they saw every day, like the animals and the landscape. And then you had people playing with the figure in, form, in the form of surrealist painting and uh, impressionism, like the Monet painting I have in the middle, which basically is like the artist's own take on what they saw. And you, and you had all of these very well-produced, meticulously done paintings. You had to study for years in order to be recognized as a successful artist in order to produce these paintings and have them be sold and for you to be seen by the art world and people who want to buy these paintings. And from 40,000 BC all the way to 19, 1940, where people were producing all of this figurative work and, and working so hard on it. And it's, it's hung in museums all around the world and people appreciate it for its beauty. In 1940, Clement Greenberg said all of it was trash and it was terrible. And nobody should make art like that ever again because why would you paint the figure? Why would you try to make something that's already there? Clement Green Greenberg was an art critic. He was not the first art critic or the best art critic, at least to himself, he was the best art critic, but he was an art critic who believed very strongly in the concept of abstract expressionism, which was the art movement that he brought to life. And if you have, if you have the figurative paintings from before the 1940s, abstract expressionism is kind of the anti-figurative painting. Figurative painting is producing figures and recognizable scenes and recognizable things. Abstract expressionism is the destruction of that, the, the removal of that, the focus on just the material and that's it, just the material. <laughs> It, it's, it's paint and canvas. And these were some of the artists that were, uh, that, that were working within that realm. We had Helen Frankenthaler, Mark Rothko, Willem de Kooning and Lee Krasner. And in these paintings, you, you might be able, because of the, humans, the human eyes need to recognize a face or a figure, you might see something, but the artist themselves, their, their intention was to create nothing. It was just to be paint, on the canvas, we're gonna focus on the material and that's it. And from all of these artists, um, Clement Greenberg's superstar was Jackson Pollock. And some of you might recognize these paintings. Some of you might know them. Some of you might've even reacted to them. I've heard a lot of people say, my kid could do that. Um, it just looks like the splatter on the canvas. Why would you pay that much money for it? And for a long time, I was also one of those people I mean, I still don't like them. <laughs> I still don't like these paintings. I still, I don't like really, I, I, it's, it's, they're not my thing, but I understand why they had to be made. I understand their place in the art history timeline. And the, these, these paintings were a crucial point in time. 
people were rejecting what they were rejecting fig, uh, the figurative art. They were rejecting stylization in, in the human figure and animal figures. And the, the, this movement was happening and it was flourishing and people were buying and creating these paintings. And then in 1956, Jackson Pollock, who was known for his struggle with being an alcoholic, went out for a drive under the influence of alcohol and he crashed into a tree and he died. And with him died the abstract expressionism movement. Maybe it might have died. But after that, the art world was kind of scrambling to pick itself back up again. What are we gonna do now? What are we going to create? And they started making up art, pop art, minimal, minimalism, and to where we are now, which is contemporary art. And you might notice that one of these images is not like the other, and that would be the bottom left image, uh, the one with the two men. That is Kehinda Wiley. He is a contemporary artist, and he is the amalgamation of all of the art history timeline. He is taking figurative art and then mixing it with a little bit of abstract expressionism, mixing it with all of those other art movements to create what we have now and what we call contemporary art. Another example that I have is on the left, we have one of my favorite figurative paintings, The Swing by Fragonard. This is a Rococo painting. And then on the right is uh, one of my favorite artists' recreation of it, um, Yinka Shonabare, who is a Nigerian artist. And you see this timeline merge and you see it crash and you see the influence that happens. You cannot outrun the past. You cannot outrun these movements and what has been created before you, no matter how hard you try. You can't put these movements to sleep and kill them. They're always going to come back. They're always going to be recreated and rebirthed. And you're going to collect all of these things, all of these influences, and you're going to present them in your own work and in your own self. And we as humans are constantly deconstructing the past, reconstructing it, and collecting its elements to present ourselves. Madam, T Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters and guests. Thank you.